All right, all right, let's rock and roll. I'm excited today. I got Miss Rebecca Hamilton from Jacksonville, Florida. This is really, really exciting. Um, like I was telling you before, I followed you a lot on social media. You do great work there, and I'm hoping we can dig into that one a, a little bit today. Um, but really, um, I, I just want to hear your story, and I'm sure our audience wants to hear your story, and, and, and hopefully they can connect with you. I love our platform, Rebecca, because really it's an opportunity for other agents at other companies to connect with EXP, but also for EXP agents to connect with their own. So, you know, without further ado, welcome to the show. Right. No, thank you so much. I'm I'm super excited to be here um, and talk to you and everyone else and tell you guys what uh, what my journey has been. So, um, so I've been at EXP a little bit over a year. I think I'm maybe uh, 13 months right now. And um, I started in real estate about 14 years ago. And when I started, the market was great. Um, and uh, my my story is a little bit interesting because I did have a son that I wanted to homeschool and I get a ton of questions about that. But I ended up um, being able to once I got into real estate, my idea was and I always had this idea that I wanted to homeschool my son. So my, so my thought was, OK, as soon as I write my first million um, in my mind, that was a big deal back then. Right. right. Uh, then I'm going to take him out. This was like if I do that, then I'm, I'm killing it. Right. Um, and so really in about within about five, six months, I wrote my first million and we had that conversation and pulled him out of school in the middle of first grade and um, ended up homeschooling him all the way through through 10th grade. And he went back for 11th and 12th. So um, but I was the sole income in my house. And I don't know how much of my story um people know, but I was the sole income. I didn't have um, anything else kind of holding me up. So it was me and real estate and my son. And um, so figuring out how to kind of work that out. So I really intentionally did between, I'm going to say two and five million for that whole time, because I wanted, I had a really big desire to be a part of my son's life mm -hmm. in a really all in way. And that's not, um, I, I, I just want to say that's not judging if you're not or you are, because I feel like there's this big push about how it should be. For me, that was super important. And that time could not be bought back. Um, so I ended up um, um, doing that. And um when my son went back to college, it was like, oh, snap, I'm about to do real estate. Yeah. I'm going to make this happen. And it really quickly kind of um, escalated for me. Um, I had already had a lot of, I had done REOs um, for years for Bank of America, the VA, that kind of fell in my lap. I say fell in my lap, but I, I like to energetically take credit for these things that I did uh, make that happen. <laughs> and um, and uh, so by the time my son was leaving, I had a really great idea of what I wanted to do. So last year, this time, a little bit earlier in the summer of last year, he left um, to go to school. And ever since then, I have been chucking and jiving here in Jacksonville, making things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I definitely want to get to that. Talk a little bit, though. I mean, I love you. I love your story because like I and I it makes me it endures me to real estate even more when I hear a story like yours because it's it's one of the it's one of the greatest things about our industry is the fact that you were um it enabled you the opportunity to to kind of plan out your destiny as it relates to um you know the way you wanted to homeschool your son and 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 raise your son. So talk a little bit about I mean the importance of that and what that meant to you. Well, for me, okay, so I, ha I have to give, I mean, I, I've got to be who I am, right? So for me, you know, I found um, it, the law of attraction when I was 19, and I didn't really put it into use. When I got into real estate, it was like, holy crap. So you found right? it three years ago, the law of attraction? No, when I was 19. Yeah, yeah. three years ago. <laughs> oh, no, God, geez, thank you. I mean, I'm like, no, that's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, but, you know, when I had my son, it changed me, the person I was. But when I got into real estate, what I loved about it is that the sky is the limit. 
like it is that for everybody in any job or whatever. But I felt like in real estate, it was really my wheelhouse because I could create what I wanted to create. Like I, there was nobody that was going to be giving me point whatever percent raises every year and telling me how much I could make. If I, you know, if I wanted to make more money, I could, if I wanted to make less, I could, if I wanted to refer out, I could, if, you know, there's just so much flexibility in it. And so I loved it. And I love the fact that my son, like I have customers still who, uh, you know, like customers who sent my son stuff for his graduation and that are still really involved with him. And I feel like it's such a misconception that you can't, do both and you can't kind of intermingle them. It's really just stems out of what you think is possible. So I'm the type who likes to push those limits. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you actually end up getting into real estate? Okay. So I got into real estate. So backstory, and you may or may, may not know this, Mike, but you know, when our son was one, my husband went to prison um and when he did so that was right devastating and he's still there by the way just to, I, I, fyi um so and we're still married um but i i was doing that job and i was thinking at that time well okay so if he's here then maybe i'll be able to work out this homeschool thing mm -hmm. so homeschooling really 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 fueled what i wanted to do i had a, a huge desire to um, bring freedom to my son's life. It wasn't in an, in an um, stance of pushing against the schools because I think that they serve people. You know what I mean? There's There are people who could thrive in that situation, I suppose. But for me, I had a really clear vision of what I wanted. So I was at a corporate job and I was making good money and um, was there with my son and they offered packages, voluntary packages. And I was like, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that. And then um, ended up, my mom was like, do you want to do real estate? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So my grandfather was in real estate and I saw how he worked and how he kind of created his own schedule and stuff. So, um, so it was just like, it made sense to me. That's awesome. And so, I mean, wow, you have a huge why. So, I mean, you went through obviously um, some life changing, some life altering events where it was kind of, um, it was shit or get off the pot basically. Right. It's like the rubber hit the road. Right. Yeah. There, there was no, it was like you had to succeed. Right. And, and so, and I see that in you and I see obviously you're relentless on social media and, and, and in your business now and the way it's grown. So talk a little bit about like, Talk a little bit about that evolution. I, I hear you say that you kind of lived the life that you designed for the first uh, maybe decade of your real estate career, right? Because it enabled you to not only have time for your business, but more importantly, have time for your, your family, right? And so right. son goes off to college and you're like, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's, no, it's really time to go. So talk about that. Like what's happened since then? Okay. So it's been amazing. I mean, I've had my best real estate stuff going on because I'm finally like fully focused here. Um, so before he was going, I started doing what I do and I was like creating my energy. I was lining up. I was getting ready. I was, I was really figuring out um, my vision of what I wanted things to look and feel like. And, um, and by the way, I knew that real estate was a huge one. And I knew that I also wanted to do what I'm doing on social media and with other things, projects that I'm working on, I wanted to be able to help people. So the helping people goes through everything that I do. So when I, uh, so my son, he was still here and I was just kind of geared up. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sit at my desk. I'm gonna get ready. I'm ready to do some work. And I started, you know, doing, going through the things that I do. And one day I was inspired to make a video and this is really how it started. And I tell this story, but this story is monumental in terms of just looking at the way um, that your belief and the way that you move into something, how it happens. So I made this video um, off of a podcast that I watched and I've been watching this and that, and I got inspired. So I did a video, I did it right here. It was, you know, this computer did it two takes 
popped it in a couple different places and it went crazy. Like I got like 40,000 views. It was stupid. Wow. Um, but I like literally am still writing business off of that. I just um, did two, the two contracts I just posted about um, a couple days ago were from that video. I've done millions of dollars of business, but I, I really was able to create this stuff and people go like, what was in the video? What was in the video? And it was like, you're missing the point. Like, yes, the video was uh, to first time home buyers and I was talking about a lender program and I was giving all of these details. And it's funny because after the fact, and I was at KW when I did that, one of my friends at KW, I showed her the video. She's like, why is it getting, you know, we were talking about how it was doing so amazing. And she said, so she watched it and she's like, oh yeah, you gave this many statistics. She said this many, this, like she broke down this formula and I'm saying, you know, don't let me get too, too crazy on you here, but I'm saying like the universe or God or whoever downloaded that because I knew what to do when I was saying it and I didn't research anything. Yeah. Like I just got on there and did my video and was genuine and authentic and really wanted to help. And it, it just, it paid off in huge ways. So I think you saw recently, I had my very first ever $50,000 a month. And what blew my mind about it was I've had years where I made less than that. So a month was like, holy crap. Like what, what just happened? Like, on, like g give me the emotions when you knew that you, you, you were, and you know this in advance, right? Because we know in most cases, you know, our deals are probably going to close, but when you, when it really started to register with you, yeah. like you're going to make 50 grand in one month. Like, tell me, like, how did that feel? Like, walk me through that. Oh, no, it was like, oh, shit. Like, this is really like, I totally did this. Like, this is OK. I remember sitting with somebody last year when I decided that I was going to kind of ramp up. Right. I thought, let me check with a team and just see. I'm not a team person. Yeah. Well, if I knew that going in, but I thought, let me just see, because remember when I got in the business, there were no teams. So um, I was like, let me go see. I mean, why are people going on teams? It was very curious to me. And it's not like people are just putting their info out there about how they're making that work. Mm -hmm. And so I went and met with somebody and I gave, I told her my goals. And, you know, when I sat down and I looked at that $50,000 a month, I'm like, dude, I'm so surpassing anything like what I told this chick. She was amazing. It just wasn't a fit. Um, like, again, like I can't, I'm like a untamed lion. Like you cannot have me on the team because I would just want to eat everybody and keep moving. So I'm not that I don't want to help, but I just think some people are meant for that and some people aren't. And that's a whole nother, another conversation. But, yeah. um, but I was through the moon. I was just like, what I wanted to tell everybody is like, if I can do that, you can do that. Like, there was no magic. I had, I didn't like, I don't come from money. I didn't have somebody supporting me. I remember listening to Russell Simmons and he said, you can do exactly what you want to do with exactly what you have. And that resonated so deeply with me. And that is the approach that I've had. Like, don't get shiny object syndrome. Don't go into debt trying to get something that you want. Figure yourself out, figure out what you want. And you can like go there a lot easier because the universe will start like filling in the house. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Like we want to fill in that. Let the universe do its work. You do yours and don't try to go and fill it in with buying this program or buying that thing or hiring this person. It's like, you know, you're shiny wasting object, money. Right? This shiny object, object syndrome. Yeah, we, we got it. We've all had that before. So, okay. So talk a little bit about like, I, I'm always interested in hearing like, so when you first heard about EXP, talk about like, what your response was. I mean, if you moved right away, if you, if it took you, you know, a year or months or talk, talk a little bit about that. Okay. So I grew up in real estate at Watson, which is a big name. Like they're sort of a very traditional brokerage, um, much like Prudential, which is now Berkshire Hathaway, but it was Prudential when I got in. And so they charge higher fees. They're on a sliding scale. Um, but their position is that they give you the brand. So you're not really branding yourself, but you're using their brand to, um, to kind of foster your business. Um, and so I was there because it was comfortable and I really, it just worked. So I was there for a long time. Um, and then I decided to go to KW. So I was at KW a hot five months, <laughs> loved it, loved KW. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I loved it. I loved it there. But when I heard about EXP, it was like, 
it was like KW 3.0 or something. It was like KW on steroids. It was just like a different thing to me. And so um, I heard somebody say this and I love this. Um, Amy Broghammer, and I know you, you mentioned her a minute ago. She said, her and I were talking once and she said, you know, uh, you have to be more loyal to yourself than your broker. She didn't say that to me to bring me over because um, I didn't actually come over uh, with her. I didn't know her then. But um, when I heard that, I thought, you know, so many of us are not loyal to ourselves. We're much more loyal to our brokers. Um, so when I heard about EXP, it took me about three months to make the switch. And nobody likes moving companies. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. It is what it is. You, you got to kind of like, you got to look at the positive sides of it. It's, it's never super simple. You have to change everything. You have to, you know. Um, but it was a no brainer. And I'm going to tell you when I first left Watson, I went to a small, small company because that company told me that they were going to give with the split that they had, which is really good split that they were going to give, um, the conversion. Oh no, it was a different website. It was, um, real geeks or something. I don't remember. It was a, it was a lead gen website. Okay. And I was like, Oh, if I'm being honest, like I didn't have five, $700 to pay a month for a website at that point. Like I, I couldn't in my mind. Right. So, um, so I went there, they ended up not panning out. They didn't, weren't going to give it, it what ended up being the case. So I decided to leave and I went to KW and the technology was fine there, but it wasn't what I was looking for. So when I heard that EXP had conversion, and sync, I was like, all right, this is going down because I knew if I could get online, like if I could have that, that is a huge, huge, huge thing. Like, I don't think people even realize how big that is to have a website like that. You're not, that's 500 and something dollars. We're not paying for that. Not to mention the structure. So when this all came to me, it was Hurricane Irma. Yeah. Um, I had three closings that were all being put off that week because and didn't close for several weeks because of Hurricane Irma. Um, and so it really kind of hit home that, you know, uh, multiple streams of income is like a really important thing. And having that, because at the end of the day, nobody's going to pay your rent or your mortgage or your electricity or your cell phone or whatever. I mean, nobody's going to pay that for you. Your broker's not going to pay it for you. Right. So that was like a kind of like a, Oh, a little bit of a wake up call, especially if you, you know, we all live in places where that kind of stuff can happen. Oh, sure. It, it, you know what? I, and one thing I have to go back to, because I'm just sitting here, I'm taking some notes because I don't know. I'm just thinking of things sporadically here, but like one thing I heard you say is like, um, being more loyal to yourself than the brokerage. But what I find is that the large majority of real estate agents, um, they're more loyal to the brokerage, it seems like. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it, if that's because, you know, they have some sort of a self-limiting belief that they can't, um, you know, that they can't sure. sell without a specific logo on their lapel or, you know, in, in like, it seems to me like this this conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, with Keller Williams agents is a very easy conversation. Like when I'm talking about EXP or when they're asking me, because I, I mean, it seems like they're, those agents are cut from the same cloth, so to speak. But the transition um, from a like a Coldwell Banker or you talked about a Berkshire Hathaway, Prudential, whatever, um, you talked about those agents. It's it's just a different. It's it's kind of a different mindset with those people. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that, you know, like for me coming in, I was basically told that the brand is what's going to bring you the business, like that the brand has been here forever and the brand and the brand. And it's like, you're not told, you don't even realize, like when I started calculating how much money, number one, I was leaving on the table. And I think we know, I think it's a little easier now because there are more of these brokerages um, showing up that are showing that the value is just so much um, when you start really kind of thinking for yourself. I mean, I know, you know, I was talking to uh, Watts, um, not a, I don't remember where she was, but she wasn't at KW. And I was telling her the other day, I said, you know, 
I, I don't know what your brokerage is telling you, but be sure that you have an email that you're using that's not your brokerage's email. And she was like, why would I do that? I mean, I want my customers to know. And I was like, because if you leave, you leave everything with them. Like, you know, and those big companies, I, I think that it's just a matter of some old school thought and a lot of fear that makes people think that they can't make it without them. But what you don't realize is if you can't make it without them, you can't make it yeah. like you can't, you got to be able to make it with or without them. It's the same thing I would tell people in a team. Although I do see the value of teams in terms of maybe learning for people who are more, they want to learn first. I like to fly by the seat of my pants. Like the first job I ever got, I totally said that I knew what I was doing uh, and I didn't know. I was like calling my mom like, Hey, how do I do this on the computer? Fake it till you make know. it. Fake it till you make yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, for me, like, uh, you know, to me, it seems like you should always go on your own, but yeah, I think it's that safety net. They feel like there's something there cause there's a brick and mortar building or they, um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what holds them there, but I, I think slowly but surely, people are starting to see that you know you you do have to be. People are much more loyal. And what is what are you being loyal to? Right. They're not paying your bills. In fact, <laughs> they're usually taking more money. And those bigger brokerages, just to make one comparison, and this is this is what I say when you're with a company that um, you know, and and forget the financial model and all that other stuff. Be with a company that if you leave, you are not reduced to 50-50 commission on the deals you have on the table. Because to me, that's blackmail. So, and I'm not trying to get real specific with stuff, but to me, that's like a very defining factor between companies. You have some who are um, much more um, punitive if you leave. Be with a company who's like, hey, if you need to leave, go on. That's the type of people you want to do business with. Yeah. So you know? talk about like, when, so you were, you said you were at Keller Williams just for a very brief time. Um, kind of talk about like what you went through personally or emotionally when you had to have that conversation with your team leader or broker uh, each time you had to make a change. Um, so I was slow to do it when I was leaving Watson well, I had left and come back because I did REOs and I did that with a very small company. And then that company went away. And, you know, when I stopped doing REOs, I decided to come back to Watson. Sure. Um, so when I had to talk to that the first time, I, I don't know, like, I don't find it hard. Uh, <laughs> it's just more like, hey, I got to got some I got to do. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Because. Yeah. You know, I've thought about it and, and here's my take on decisions. And uh, I talk about this a lot with people, but when I make a decision, I make it right. And before I speak my decision, I make it right. And so therefore, there's not a lot of talking me out of things. I'm, I, I usually am very set because I have lined my energy up before behind it before I ever tell you about it. Yeah. So there is no going into my broker and him doing what? Like being playing the guilt game or the, I mean, to me, that just makes me feel even less about you. Like I, I had a broker and I'm not going to name which one, but I mean, I, I had one that tried to take shots and this is, Oh, you're doing this and it's going to do the, and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, that's not attractive. Like, you know what I mean? Don't, don't do that. Because if I ever decide to change my mind, you've just changed my mind to not come back here because you know, I'm not the type of person who wants to, like, I don't want to have to talk bad about Keller Williams to make EXP look good. I want to tell you why I love EXP and it stands alone from Keller Williams. I love that. Listen, that that is a great pearl of wisdom because you're right. I mean, it's we're coming from a place of abundance, right? And, you know, I love the fact that you said you get in alignment with your decisions um, so that, you know, it makes that process a little bit easier for you. But let, let me ask you this. So for the person that, you know, uh, it may not be so easy for, how do you, when you talk about getting in alignment with a decision, like leaving your current brokerage, how do you do that? Like, what would you recommend someone go through to do that? So, I mean, I think that most of us know when our time is up at a brokerage and we usually aren't taking those cues. Um, I think it's my dog. Well, hello. 
Hey, Ziggy's here. Uh, somebody just knocked on the door. It's probably dropping off something. Yeah, this, that's the best part of being live. You know what I mean? Is hey, we're all, and, and most of us have moms. I did one of these uh, Tuesday with Adam Bailey. Same thing. So yeah. the, dogs, the dogs love the show, man. They do. They want to be on it. He's like, you invited my mom. I'm coming on there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, Ziggy. Ziggy. Stop. That's my dog whisper. You know how he teaches that? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, um, what was the question? So oh, how do you yeah. do that? Right, right. How do you get, to, how do you get in alignment with your decisions when you're making a change? Um, when you are making a change, I think the best way, and I'm so sorry, I don't know if somebody's still knocking at my door or what's happening, but you are totally fine. Listen, it's no big deal. <laughs> He's just like going on. So when I'm making a change, um, first thing is I'm very um, cognizant of dollars and cents. Um, I was cognizant when I gave up a half of my commission on a double ended deal at, at Watson that I, I gave up a lot of money and that hurt my feelings. Right. So, um, you know, that's the first thing. Um, I honestly think it's a gut check. You got to You got to do the gut check and you got to do it before you get logical about it. Like do the gut check first, because here's the thing is you could go to a company that looks like it makes sense on paper or whatever, or you could leave a company and it looks like it makes sense on paper, but you know, your gut is what's going to tell you. And it's, it's going to make it, you know, because we don't know it, it may be that, yeah, that company is a great company, but maybe it's at a different time or whatever. So I'm like, I'm, I'm so about intuition and how to really tap into that. Um, so once I get that gut check, I'm pretty much going to line up reasons behind my gut check. So if my gut check is go to EXP, now I'm going to start looking for evidence about why that's a good decision. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be looking for why it's not a good decision. I'm going to be looking for why it is a good decision. Right, Because your intuition um, told you it was. So you want to make sure and right. back that up the right way, right? With positive energy. So I'm backing it up and it's the same thing. And I tell my son this when, cause he plays football at college and I tell him this, he's on the O line. And I say, you know, if you are going to, when you step up to that line, I've been telling him this, he picked up a football in ninth grade. He's like, mom, I don't know what to do. Like I get out there and I want to be mean, you know, but he's a nice kid. So uh, I said, you know, whoever believes it more is who's going to run the situation. And that's when it comes to energy too. Like if you go into uh, your meeting with your broker and you are solid, that conversation goes a lot smoother. Um, you're going to direct and lead that conversation. Whereas if you go in there and you're like, I just really don't know what I'm going to do. I've thought about it. You know what? I'm going to leave. And you're worried about what they think. Isn't that ironic that we're more worried about what our, how our broker is going to feel than we are about how we're feeding our families. Yeah. Is that not crazy? Like we are more worried about people pleasing than we are about just being authentic and true to ourselves. And my thing is, it's like, if your broker doesn't like it, then your broker didn't really like you. Cause if your broker really likes you, um, and I loved all my brokers and all of them were very kind to me when I went to them and said, I mean, generally speaking, one of them poo pooed a little bit, but generally speaking, all of them were very kind. And I think you can set that up. Yeah, I think that you're you're right. It, it's it it is totally like you obviously have got some stuff dialed in like mentally, um, and I think that's a part of it's been a part of my journey too. Um, and it's been I, I think I talked about this the other day, and I tell my team about it all the time because I think one of the biggest I think one of the biggest problems in real estate is that people are teaching skill set and not mindset. I think the problem is you teach all these people all these skills and yet um, they've kind of missed the boat when it comes to having the proper mindset. So while they, they're, they're very, they're highly skilled yeah. when it comes to crunch time, it's like they're not having the appropriate conversation because they don't have it right in the head. And it sounds like, I mean, not only do you approach your business that way, but you approached your move very much that way. Yes. So, I mean, what do you, how did you get to this place where you've got it really dialed in like mentally? 
Oh, it's just practice. I mean, it literally is just one of those things over time you start, you know, when you're not flexing a muscle, as I learned this morning when I went to the gym and it was very painful. I'm um, actually yesterday morning. No. Yeah. Yesterday morning, but I went to the gym anyway. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's the muscle, you know, it's like you've got to um, really be willing to let go of the idea that anybody else has control of your destiny that anybody else is creating in your life. You have to be really willing to own your shit. You have to be really willing to, um, just to own who you are and be okay with it. And, and I, I mean, how do you do that? I don't know. I have a course coming out. I'd love to show you. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like my thing is, is like, you've got to get, and I, I've been saying this and this is not a knock on on any coaching or on um, any programs, because I do both, but you can buy all the, like self-help, the, that um, industry is making billions, y'all, because people don't do the work. And the work, it's a lot easier to do the outside exterior work because you don't have to be alone with number one. I literally did a video yesterday and was singing man in the mirror. Go find me on Instagram. I'm just saying I did that. But if you are not willing to get a hundred percent with you, like get bare chest with you, then nothing you do. Here's the thing. You're, you may be able to get the accolades. You may be able to make the money. You may be able to climb the mountain, but you are not going to be happy, not really, really happy. And that's what doing all that internal stuff does is that it makes you uh, be happy. Cause at the end of the day, you want the things so that you feel good. Like, bottom line, you buy the car. So you feel good. You marry the girl. So you feel good. You get the dog, so you, whatever it is, you get the money. So you feel good. Um, so do it the other way around. It's a lot easier and you start getting some help. Yep. Great advice. So, okay. So you, you've been over at EXP. Well, talk about like, what was your, what was your, what was the structure of your business um, when you moved? Like, I mean, your, what, what did you do volume wise last year, um, volume and units wise last year? And then what will you do this year? <laughs> you want to know numbers? Don't play with me. I don't know. Um, I don't even look at my numbers. Like I'm just looking at my paychecks. That's horrible. Don't tell Hank I said that. I know one number and it's 50 grand in one month. Right. So I did that. Um, yeah, no, I'm doing amazing. Like, to be honest with you, the whole time raising my, actually my whole time in real estate, um, because of my splits. And I want to make this very clear. Had I been on this same structure all that time, I would have hit six figures. Yeah. This year is the first year, um, that I am going to hit six figures. Well over actually. Um, in my career. And I say that, you know, it's scary, right? Because everybody's always like, you know, who's better? Who's doing more? Who's doing this? It matters what structure you're in. Because if I was in a different structure, not giving up so much money, I would have had a different amount. So I can talk to you about the money that I, the numbers I put up in production, but I'd rather tell you about what I'm bringing home because that's what really matters to me. Yeah. That's what matters to me too. And, and, and you yeah. know, it, it is like, I'm glad it, it honestly, it doesn't even matter. I mean, I just love to hear that, you know, you, you, you know, you've got it dialed in mentally when you don't even have to measure yourself by the number of transactions or volume. It's unfortunate that, that our industry does that. Um, and they use that as a benchmark for what we call success, right? I guess yeah. from a, from a, from a measurement standpoint, obviously yeah. that doesn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't measure, you know, the quality of life or some of the more right. things. But for you, it's like it's like you reverse engineered it. Like for me, I didn't figure it out. Like I was work, 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 work. Right? We get yeah. to the transactions. Okay, we're at three hundred transactions. Okay, let's go to five hundred. Okay, let's go to a <laughs> thousand. Right? And it's like, where does it even end? It's like, yeah. holy cow! You know, it, I'll tell you where it ends. It ends after you, you. It ends in divorce. It ends after a heart attack. It ends after you know you lose your, your kids. Yep. And you, you did it in reverse and like, yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody tell me that before. And that is like really freaking cool. So kudos to you. I don't know like yes. how you managed to pull that off. You're doing things in the right order. Dude, I'm telling you, like, I know people hear law of attraction and they're like, think of the car, get the car. Like law of attraction, like 
this is my thing. Like, and, and, and the thing is, is that what, what I find, you know, cause like the secret came out and, and I feel like, yeah, it probably did help some people, but it, it kind of annoyed me because it was very materialistic. And, you know, law of attraction is one of the realest things that I know. Um, and I'm black and white. I'm super, I'm a very literal person. Um, so I spread that shit very liberally over my entire life and I'm not going to play the victim to anything. And, you know, I just like, I believe you got to do the work. And here's the thing when I got, and it may, this makes me emotional because when I got that set of cassette tapes from my mom, um, you know, it was like, if this can work, it has to work. Like I have to figure it out. And I moved with that, um, with that intensity only when I found out I was having my son and I say it and I mean it a hundred percent. He saved my life, um, in so many ways. And the least I could do was set him up for a win in parenting. Um, and just for having the honor, like I, I totally look at that as a privilege and I wasn't going to waste one second. You know, I grew up and I grew up with a, a mom who has, who's, who's had regrets. And I think a lot of people do seeing that made me know. And I thank her to this day, like for that, I don't want regrets. Like I don't want the prize at the cost of a regret. Yeah. I, that just doesn't resonate with me at all. Like. I want to feel good and feel whole. And that's most important to me. So love not it. going on a rant. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Okay. So talk, uh, talk a little bit about like, okay, you made, uh, obviously technology was a big part of your decision to come over to EXP. And so talk about like, talk about that as it relates to maybe some of the changes that you made right away in your in your business and then maybe how that's helped fuel some of that growth this year oh it totally has so like i'm the type of person when i put something down in paper and then it happens i'll like cry at my desk i do it all the time so uh <laughs> so i put down in paper that this sounds elementary to y'all but i had not had a lead gen system where it put it in my CRM and automatically connected. Like I hadn't had that. The day that that happened, I was at EXP and I was in tears. Like I was like, this is amazing. Um, having the technology to back up whatever system it is that you want to use is so important. And I mean, we're moving that way. So I have gotten so much, first of all, I like, I love conversion. I'm a conversion person. I love conversion. I love KB core and it is a intuitive software. So when I can be at my son's game and my software is emailing somebody and they are uh, texting them and texting me, and setting up that connection, that's pretty amazing. I mean, and I do both, um, I do both types. I mean, I'm very relational. I don't ever get customers that aren't for life. Yet I had to do a lot of transactional to build that up. And um, and it came, you know, super easy. But yeah, having being able to have those connections um, and have it online is huge. It right. is huge. And people don't realize, Y'all don't realize what your broker is giving you. It's not every broker. A lot of brokers are offering subpar stuff and promising the moon and it never comes. It never gets there. So you're stuck and you're sitting in this, you know, same thing and you're not progressing. You got to you with technology. It is important to keep up. Yeah. So. <laughs> What what is the future look like for you, man? I'm just curious for somebody who's so who's so dialed in mentally. It's like, what do you, what do you, if if it's not like if you're not like well okay you know I'm I want to get to a thousand deals right? It's like this arbitrary number that we make up to impress people, right? What when I ask you that question, like what do you want to say? What does my future look like? Yeah, like where are you looking to take all this? Like where where, where do you where where are you going? So real estate is definitely a love and I will always have it. Um, I am going to teach people this, like this is what 
I, this is my passion. My passion is so I'm writing a book and it's called LOA Junkie, Real Stories of an Energy Hustler. And it is all about how to hustle energy. You know, it's like, we want to hustle it on the outside. We, we think hustling is moving. I'm saying, let's hustle it from the inside. That's how you um, can really create really phenomenal results in a short amount of time. Um, and so, yeah, so in terms of my business, I want to do as much business as I can do um, and be happy. So whatever that looks like, um, I have standards of feelings and ideas of what things look like in my head. And those are going to stay my standards. Um, but it's not necessarily a number and I just don't resonate with that. I feel resistance when I go and I was, I was on an interview the other day and the lady said to me that she has a, um, of a goal that has a certain number of deals in it and i just don't resonate with that it actually creates resistance for me it's like okay i don't because i'm not i'm not a competition person like i compete with myself but i just can't like i can't yeah so my whole thing is i really am want to do both i want to teach realtors but just people in general how to find themselves and align their energy and that's um what my whole program is about that I'm in beta testing now for, um, and it's called a line. It's just line yourself up, like do yourself a favor. This is, this is going to make your life easier. If you can get past that initial work that, that is hard, if you can get past that, dude, it gets so much easier. Yeah. So, okay. So here's what I'm hearing you say then. And um, this is probably why that comment when I said people are, people are teaching skill set and they should be teaching mindset. Because it sounds like somebody's already discovered that and somebody maybe is taking initiative to, to start making that change. Am I right? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, that's that is what I, I scream at. And it's not just mindset. A lot of mindset that's being taught is action oriented. I and mean, that's the other thing is there's mindset and then there's like alignment. And yeah. that's why I call myself an alignment coach, because I don't want to teach you how to take more actions. I want to teach you how to um, line up your energy so that you are in a consistently better place so that you can start noticing more and getting more of what you want and dialing into your intuition and hearing what it's saying so that you just have better days and better outcomes and and surprises from the universe. You know, I didn't ask. It wasn't like I sat down and went, I want a $50,000 a month. I didn't yep. say that. That wasn't like something I said, but it was like, you know, but that was all in my vibe. <laughs> it was like, you know, yeah. this is the money. The money was just a byproduct of who you became, <laughs> right? Yes, it's a side. It's a everything we want is a is a is a side product of it. It is not. It's not the thing. Right, and, and so, um, like, I'm interested, like, if you want to share more about like what you're beta testing and like when the book comes out and stuff like that. I mean, I would love to, you know, connect our audience with, with you and, you know, give you an opportunity how to plug people in. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my beta testing is already underway. So as soon as, as soon as I'm done with these folks who are being amazing and giving me feedback, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, my, I believe my launch date is in November. 11, 11 is the goal. So cool. everything uh, goes well. I told I told people um, that I wouldn't let you go without um, digging in just a little bit to your social media following and how you conduct yourself on social media and, and how you've kind of attracted so many followers. Um, so to that person right now that may be watching or listening um, who really wants to get their social media dialed in, like what do you how do you how, how would you tell them to start out? Well, it's scary for most people because for years, it was scary for me to claim LOA. Like I do it now, but it was scary because people, you know, you're really afraid that people won't get you. And in fact, they didn't get that. But, um, but the biggest thing that I can tell people is to be authentic. And it takes, you know, I just made this connection this morning and I'm sure I'm not the first person to make the connection, but I was, I was on the bike and I was making, having these thoughts. And, uh, and I was thinking, you know, I, I really love the idea of being um, courageous, right. And being brave. And what we tend to do is we segment ourselves to people, please. And we people please in social media and we people please in with our husband or wife. And then maybe we people please with our kids and, and yada, yada, yada customers. And it's like, 
bringing all of that back in is and just figuring out who you are and showing up authentically to all those places. And at first, it feels like people pleasing is authentic because you're so used to it. Yeah. Um, you're so used to wanting to be accepted and stuff. And so it's like for social media guys, to me, the best thing that you can do is if you can do video, do it. Um, it but be who you are. <laughs> but first figure yourself out. Like don't go out there posting a whole bunch of big, victim negative shit. Like yeah. <laughs> be who you are and be, uh, being the most that you are is really what's going to get that because you want people who are connecting with you, not just followers. You want people who get you and not just, oh, look, I have a big number over here. You know what I'm saying? And the way you do that is by bringing all that back in. And I think being authentic and being courageous and brave are all in that same wheelhouse. So um, that is so true. That That is great advice. And I'm curious, though, because you talked um, about like, when you posted that first video and you got all those responses and you know, were, was the, was the self-talk at that point where you, were you, was any part of you like, Oh my gosh, like what if, what if I don't, what if they judge? No, me? I was scared shitless. Are you kidding me? But I knew I had to do it. Okay. Like it wasn't, it was totally intuition and I can't say it enough because we want to fill an intuition with logic. Like we just do. And it was totally do it and put it out there. And it was like, I'm not going to, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it back. I didn't edit it. Um, I just put it out there. And to be honest with you, and I've told this story before, but, you know, I, I had been up there for a little while and then a lady got up and said, oh, my God, I I can't even watch this. It's disgusting. I can't believe you didn't have your hair and makeup professionally done. It was like going off on me. And before I could say anything to her, I had five people hop on there and defend me. And one of them, I ended up selling her mom a house. So it was like people are going to hate. Look, it's a fact of life. What the statistic, I think I just heard somebody say this. A third of the people love you. A third of the people hate you. And the third of people don't care. Like you have to not care about that. There, right. To me, you're doing your job. Like that's a mark for me of people of like doing the right thing is when people don't like you. Yeah. Because if everybody loves you, you're not, you know. So, yeah, I was scared when I did that. And I didn't know it was going to get that response, but that was the idea that came and, and, and it felt right. So I did it. And, and, and anytime I followed that inspiration, honestly, it always works out. Yeah. So listening to that is so, so huge. Great advice. Great advice. So, okay. So just a couple more questions here for you. And I asked sure. this to everybody. I, I, I love asking this question because everybody usually has a different answer, but so to that agent out there or that broker who's listening to us uh, or watching us um, and they're thinking about exp they maybe even thinking about making a change or they're just doing some research what what do you what is what does Rebecca Hamilton tell that person so one of the biggest things that I found what's going on do you hear feedback or is it me no nope, we're good our audio is good okay um, one of the biggest things that I found that I wasn't, sh that you just can't know until you get here is first of all, the leading edge thinkers like that to me is power in and of itself. People who are thinking outside of the box. And what do they say? There's never a, a crowd on the leading edge. Um, so, you know, when you're in that outside box, that to me was something that drew me to EXP. One of the things that I couldn't have known is that the amount of community and support, it is far greater than I got anywhere else. Ever. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because you're in there with people here. Um, you know, I hop on the computer and I've got people, I've got friends all over the country. It really gave me the ability to connect with people in a different way. And I know KW does that a little bit, um, but I think that we're at the next level of that. And I think the community side of it, it's a big deal. A lot of people hear, oh, it's, there's no brick and mortar. You don't need a brick and mortar. Like this is so much more amazing. I didn't go into my brick and mortar. And if I'm being honest, I was guilty. I felt guilty sometimes about it. And my broker would say, we want you in here. We want blah, blah, blah. And so now it's like I can log in. And there's this huge sense of community and this huge sense of, you know, people looking out for each other that I had not experienced before I got here. 
Yeah. So I think that's a big deal. I mean, aside from the amazing, you know, other things that I've talked about in terms of money and technology. Yep. Yep. Man, great answer. Great answer. So how can people connect with you either for um, either for coaching or if they want to get more information on on the book or, or if they want to get more information on EXP? Like what, yeah. what do you suggest people do to connect with you? Well, you can find me on Facebook. Um, Rebecca Hamilton, you can go to my Facebook page, which is L O A junkie, J U N K I E. Um, and like I'm on Instagram too. I'm a couple different places, but I would find me on Facebook. Um, I have a site that's being sort of built out right now. So I'm kind of, um, hanging out without that, but, uh, you can find me on Facebook, message me. I'm super easy to get to and I, uh, pretty responsive. So I'd love to connect. And she is a great follow, so I would highly encourage uh, following her. Tell me this. Um, tell, I'm sure everybody's wondering what LOA stands for, so I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask. Oh, a law of attraction. Law of attraction. Okay. <laughs> yep. You guys LOA. Are, law of attraction. Yeah, you yeah. can't you can't beat it out of me, really. Yeah, um, and, and that that is you. I mean, it it, it emanates from you, and, and certainly yeah. I can see that you have great energy. It's been a a, a very um, it's been a pleasant interview. I, I, like I said before, I was really excited about this one because you and I haven't formally met. I mean, obviously I followed you on social media and, uh, but I, I don't, I don't know you now like I do, um, after you talk to somebody. And, and so I'm really looking forward to hopefully, um, seeing you at EXP con and maybe we can connect there. For and, sure. um, and, and I appreciate you taking the time out today to spend with, uh, with myself and, and, and that, that person watching or listening to the show right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Thanks for having me on. And I hope that whoever watched just at least watches walks away with the idea that, that they can do whatever it is they want to do. Awesome. Rebecca, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. I appreciate right. it. Uh, yeah, you